G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and just check out this sea of green endive taking over this whole small raised round garden bed. Yes, there's this Jerusalem artichoke and a few lettuce trying to fight off the masses, but this endive is just taking over and dominating. In this video, I wanna give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of this superfood called endive. So without any further delay, let's just end dive right into it. Endive is a leaf vegetable and a member of the daisy family. Although you might say it looks like lettuce mark. And yes, that's true. Lettuce is also a member of this family group. Weird, hey? But unlike lettuce, which has clusters of tiny flowers, endive does flower a bit like a daisy. There can be some confusion as to the origins of endive, but it's likely the plant developed naturally from other chicory varieties found in Europe and West Asia. Other plants such as radicchio and Belgian whitloaf are closely related genus-wise. Endive is a real superfood and has very high levels of vitamin K. Just eating a small amount will get you your vitamin K daily requirement. Endive is also notably high in folate and manganese. In fact, there's a whole array of important vitamins, minerals and antioxidants found in endive that work together to protect the body through regulating blood sugar levels to metabolizing carbohydrates and fats. So next time you have a big carb meal like burger and fries, instead of washing it down with a Coke, Wash it down with a cup of endive. It'll be much better for you. Tip number one, planting. Honestly, endive could have made the list in that video that I made last year, top five vegetables that are just too easy to grow because it really is a sow and forget type of crop. In a warm climate such as here, Plant and sow endive during the coolest part of the year, like as we're coming into winter now, being in the subtropics. In a cooler climate, I would plant it in early spring or in really cold areas, you can plant it through winter underneath a hoop house or in a greenhouse and that could work quite well also. What I did here may well surprise you. Basically last season, I grew a mixed salad crop in this bed of lettuce, spinach, celerac, radicchio, I think I had a few dwarf beans and just one endive plant. That one plant's offspring is what you see filling this bed today. And all I did was let the plant grow out at end of season, die off, and then scrunch the dead endive plant's dried flower seed heads into the bed. Cover with a little compost and leave the bed rest until next growing season. Yes, you can also sow in seed raising trays and then transplant the seedlings out into the garden. As far as pests or disease goes, endive is pretty hardy and if grown properly without stressing it, it should thrive but watch for slugs and snails or rot spots on the leaves caused by fungi. These can all be picked off and managed by hand organically. In this bed here, I transplanted endive seedlings from more populated areas to fill gaps in the bed so that we had a more even spread of endive crowded in together. Which brings me on to tip number two, crowd growing. If you're a regular watcher of my videos, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of crowd growing vegetables in raised garden beds like this, whereby we throw out those rules of planting spaces and we end up growing them as close together as we possibly can. This natural method of growing actually works quite well for most vegetables. Crowd growing endive helps to smother competition from weeds, making less work for the backyard grower. It helps to protect the plants from adverse weather conditions because they're all cuddled together like kittens keeping each other warm. And the competition from their peers for sunlight, water and nutrients grows tender, tasty leaves. Plus it's a great utilization of a small space. Tip number three, water and fertilizer. Having said that about crowd growing in the previous tip, because these plants are crowded in and close together, you'll need to ensure they get 
regular water and properly fed. You don't want the bed to continually dry out for lengthy periods between watering or this will stress the plants out causing them to bolt to seed prematurely and develop an unpleasant extra bitter taste. In a warm subtropical climate like we have here I tend to water these plants daily and I test the dampness or dryness of the soil by using the old dippy finger test whereby I dip the finger in up to about the second knuckle and if it comes out dry I know this bed definitely needs watering. Combining a soluble fertilizer high in nitrogen such as your own fertilizer tea or an organic based commercial product watered into the plant every four weeks or so will give the plants the extra nutrients this fast growing vegetable needs to keep the leaves lush, crispy and tasty. Tip number four, grow to seed. Often gardeners miss a trick by ripping their endive plants out when they have gone past their use by and are starting to get bitter and tough to eat. Please don't do that. By leaving endive grow on to seed, you'll find it will develop into a stunning purple flowering ornamental that looks amazing in the patch. Not only that, the flowers attract pollinating insects to your garden, such as bees, and this helps pollinate other plants and enriches your micro ecosystem overall in the backyard. Once the plants die off, you can collect the seeds to replant next season, or just be cavalier like me and chuck them everywhere. <laughs> Tip number five, harvesting and eating. Rather than pull out the plant whole, harvest the leaves separately from several of the plants. That way you'll promote young and crisp growth. This will enable months of sustainable produce, possibly without the need to succession sow. Endive is known to have a slightly bitter aftertaste, and this is what makes it attractive to the palate of many vegetable eating connoisseurs. Endive is often mixed with other salads to add a zest or zing to the overall taste. Personally, I like the bitterness. It reminds me of olives that have been cured the old way in brine, preserving a slight natural bitterness that enhances the flavour. My Italian uncle first introduced me to curly and spiny leafed endive salad on its own back in the early 90s, smothered in olive oil and vinegar or lemon juice with salt and pepper. Yummy! You may have also heard of blanching endive. This is usually done with a pot or a container placed over the plant, but also usually done with those hearting and broadleaf varieties of endive. The idea is the container or pot starves it of sunlight, making the end produce less bitter. Rather than using this pot method, I usually just harvest the endive young and it gives a similar result. One final excellent quality of endive is how it can be used in both cold and hot dishes, either as a salad mixed with hot food or cooked like spinach or used in stir fries. Try shredded endive sprinkled with Parmesan cheese topped with a runny egg fried in butter. It really is a taste sensation to endive for. See what I did there? And that's it. Those were my five top tips on growing a ton of endive. Planting, crowd growing, water and fertilizer, grow to seed, harvesting and eating. Do all those things right and you'll grow a ton of endive just like I can. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big green thumbs up. Also share it around. I'm on Patreon, so if you want to support me over there, that'd be fantastic. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've got any other related tips to growing endive, please whack them in the comment section below so that we can all learn from them. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.